Scouting Education, Sport, Arts, Culture and Recreation, MEC Matume Chilwane, says President Cyril Ramaphosa must proceed with the signing of the Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill tomorrow, and this is despite opposition from some quarters. The Gauteng Department of Education says the bill empowers the heads of department to make critical decisions regarding school admissions and language policies. Gauteng Education MEC Matume Chilwane joins us now via Teams for more on this. MEC, so thank you so much for your time. So much has been said about this bill. There's been some resistance and on other fronts, also some people even welcoming it. So talk to us about this bill and what is the bill, Bella bill? Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Uh, was it morning or afternoon to your viewers and yourself? Uh, look, there are key areas that we, we, we are hate about. The first one is the compulsory grade R, uh, which it, it progresses on its own. That will allow us to bring in our learners at an early age so that we can begin the process of developing them. Uh, and it fits in very well with the broad strategic uh, framework of allowing, of us incorporating ECD since it has been moved to, to education. The second one, we are looking at uh, the, the admission policy. Currently, the admission policy as it stands, it just ends with the SDBs. And which on its own, it's got the possibility and it has been proven to, to ensure, it's been proven that it prohibits transformation in general in some of the schools. Hence, you will have some opposition believing that it's an, uh, it's, it's an encroachment by the, by the department uh, or rather the education departments across the country into their own schools. Thirdly, we are looking at accountability, the finances of the school. There are schools that are not declaring the true finances of the school. And that makes it very difficult as well from the position of, of, of the government in terms of how do you then restructure and reprioritize in terms of funding the schools. Uh, and that will allow us and also to hold accountable the parents with regard to uh, parents who are not in compliant with children of school going age, the responsibility they should pay, etc. And the penalties thereof. So there are many areas that we can look for from this bill that will allow us to continue to transform the sector and to continue to ensure that we get our children to, to live, study and play together. And I know you just touched on admissions as well. And I know there was also reaction from the front of the Democratic Alliance, which they spoke about this aspect, particularly when we look at admission policies. They said this bill seeks to disempower school governing bodies from determining their school's admission policies and centralize this uh, competency to the head of a provincial uh, department, the HOD. What would your response be to that? No, that's really far from the truth. I mean, the first aspect, there have been those who are arguing that it's going to compromise the quality. And our argument has always been consistent. And I'm happy that during the consultation process, it was highlighted that the educators that teach in those schools go have been to the same university that educators that they teach in township school. So which aspect of quality is compromised? Unless they could have proven to us that there are schools that provide, produce better teachers than others which they, it doesn't hold. Secondly, the admission aspect. When we speak about admission, we're speaking about transformation, we're speaking about learning spaces, we're speaking about uh, getting our learners to be able to work, to study together. And that's what we're talking about. So currently, the SGPs have been also at the center of not agreeing with the, or, or rather pushing back when we want to ensure that we create dual uh, language policy in the schools. They've been refusing it uh, uh, entirely. With so, and in certain context, as such a province with such a cosmopolitan population, where all all languages, twelve languages rather, exist, you then have schools that are, want to be single medium. It's not good. It doesn't work. It makes it very difficult. And 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 it even goes against. They, they know themselves in some of the schools that it's quite difficult to retain a school in a one language in one language, for instance, in Africans. When you know that the school population is dwindling, eventually those schools become unsustainable. And at that point, that's when they begin to succumb. But now with this particular mock bill, it will allow us to intervene at an early stage to ensure that we continue to get our schools sustainable in that respect. So for us, it's what really is going to help, especially you know the challenges that we generally have at the beginning of the academic year with regard to admission, that we have schools that want to resist uh, the placement of learners due to language. So that prohibition will not exist anymore. So we, we are really enthusiastic and hence we are using the president to say, 
continue to sign this policy, this bill. It is what is necessary to really continue in our path as a nation to build a single nation where everybody has space and everybody lives in place together. And as part of the criticism that we've also seen on some fronts, MEC, the bill also seeks to have all home education children registered. Uh, we heard that looking at the numbers of the number of children that are being homeschooled, some have even said this is logistically impossible to actually get a hang on this. And what would you say to that also? The key word, transparency, accountability. That's what we want. The bill talks about that. And it's important because now you have children who are homeschooled. When they come into the system, there is a particular claim that they are at this level of, uh, of uh, competency. And, and without any formal evidence, it becomes difficult and to really understand. So this is what we want. It's just calling for transparency. And if a child is going to go to school, it needs to be registered, and we need to understand who, who's teaching them, the, cap the capacity of the person who's educating, the, teaching them. And that's all, that's all that we want. Uh, so there is no really fundamental. This is quite a progressive bill. It's a step in the right direction uh, for the sector. And, and, and I'm happy with all, all those who have come forward to really say this is what we need in ourselves. And for those who are opposing it, I'm, I'm appealing to them to give it an opportunity. Uh, and really, they will see that this bill really seeks to transform our education and actually improve our educational outcomes in the long run. And interestingly, uh, caught in the center of this MEC is current Minister of Basic Education, the DA Siviwe Guajube. Can she implement a law her party disagrees with? Uh, I've read somewhere, I've not spoken to her, but I do believe she has said, uh, according to the, her words, is that she's a minister of the Republic of South Africa. And the laws that are signed by the president, she will implement it. And that is the attitude that really is greatly welcome from the minister. I don't, want, I, I don't, I don't want to see her as a DA minister. I see a minister, a minister is responsible for the department that we are all part of. And, and so far, we've been working very closely and very good with the minister. We have not impeded, uh, encountered any challenges I can have to declare with the minister uh, from the start since the beginning of the term. So, so far, she's been in pr principle, and she really understands that she has a responsibility for the learners, the educators, and the whole schooling community. All right, that is Gauteng Education, MEC Matume Chilwane joining us there on the Bella Bill just to give us a bit of context as well as their reaction as the Gauteng Education Department to this. Let's move.